Howdy, welcome back to my DIY Expedition Camper build video series. And a lot of people have been asking as we've been building out my DIY Expedition Camper and this Total Composites Camper Shell using 8020 extruded aluminum framing to frame out my cabinets, why am I trying to minimize the number of fasteners and instead adhere it mostly with glue? And I have to kind of respond, well, lots of things are installed with glue. Even the Earth Cruiser pass-through from the cab is attached to glue to the cab metal body itself. The actual total composites box is all glued together to all the extrusions. Every bit of it's glued together. And even, of course, the panels themselves are composite panels. So therefore, they are all actually glued to each other just as any composite panel is. And of course, the windows and the skylights are also glued to that shell. And they do this because it's leak free and it's strong and it's solid and you know lots of things are glued this way batteries for example are glued this way as it is a way to make sure they're sealed up from air and water make them medically sealed and also safer this way and also non-electrically conductive now in some areas also i provided my plumbing pass-throughs by gluing them to the actual camper body but also screwing them through as well and that way they're actually removable but sealed with the adhesive sealant now i got into adhesive sealant over 10 years ago my first van with a fiberglass penthouse roof where I glued all the solar panels everything to that roof to avoid the penetrations through the roof and it worked great and it provided not only a very strong connection it could hold up at any speed that that van could do but also make sure it was watertight so what are we going to talk about today how to attach these cabinets to a composite camper with glue and adhesives instead of fastening and so which is stronger and which will last longer well let's get into it let's find out you know, some people ask, is this adhesive that I'm using strong enough to hold this 80-20 cabinet framing to the walls and the ceiling and everything else without any bolts or other fasteners? The answer is absolutely, and I'll show you in some tests here that it is more than strong enough. One thing to make sure you do is prep the glued surfaces with some rubbing alcohol or some other cleaner before putting them on just to make sure that any oils or residues from the manufacturing process and whatever else are clean obviously make sure the wall or ceiling or floor are also clean but just to give you a quick perspective i mean these are just glued in and there is no movement at all now granted most of my force right here is going down but i've been using these all the time to pull up and if you probably see by the camera the whole camera is rocking right there is no movement of this of these boxes at all and i've been hanging from down here like this pulling myself up no movement and it's only glued in in a very minimal amount of spots right now but ideal but really good spots so it's basically glued in at the base of this cabinet so the base here the base here and at the wall up here like this so i basically have it glued in in these three places wall and two on the floor as i go up here i'm going to glue in these verticals that go up along the walls here and that'll seal these this part of the frame cabinet onto the wall really giving this upper cabinet law support. And I also have these horizontal pieces like this. They're gonna go up against the wall and be glued up against it as well. And one thing I wanna to try to do is get things for the most part constructed and laid out so that dimensionally I can feel how the cabinet in the space before I glue it in. Because obviously once you glue it in, it's pretty much permanent. Yes, you can cut it away, but it's not easy. It's not something you wanna do. So that's why I wanna make sure everything's lined up, queued up straight. All these cabinet frames are vertical and parallel with each other and, and all that. So I always check my reference points with my digital level meter for every piece I put in that's gonna be glued in or it's gonna have a key point to make sure that it's perpendicular with the floor and that it's parallel with all the, the walls, essentially the front and back walls. So that way everything's you know nice and straight. So some of you have been asking just how strong is this 8020 when it's glued to the walls of the total composite camper and the walls and the floor and or the ceiling instead of actually adhering with fasteners and I will attest it's actually stronger than adhering with fasteners and quite a bit stronger and so if you look at the low calc so with that little thin fiberglass reinforced sheet that is on the walls of the floor can really hold before it gets to the foam it's a pretty thin sheet you know it's less than an eighth uh, less than a sixteenth inch thick and so it's not very thick it doesn't have a lot of strength as far as a screw holding purchase and so we don't want to screw something into it right because of that now you could put some kind of anchors on it you could glue some wood and screw into the wood but then you're just adding a whole second point of failure right gluing wood and then gluing or attaching aluminum to that so why have a whole you know another point of failure just go with one and make it strong and because this glue has a essentially a shear strength or a tension strength that's far greater than 500 pounds per square inch 
even a one inch profile for every inch, you got over 500 pounds of force that it can, you can pull or push or hang from it. Assuming that the substrate doesn't fail, meaning the camper box itself. And I would probably say that the camper box will start failing once you start, you know, getting a few inches and applying a few thousand pounds of force across the, that aluminum profile. And certainly that'll be far stronger than what a screw in wood could hold, right, in almost all cases. And so the glue is going to be far stronger, especially when it's spread out over a length of this aluminum framing here over, of course, a lot of the total composite wall or, or floor or ceiling because it's spreading that load out over a much bigger surface area. And also, it doesn't have any thermal expansion or contraction issues like a screw would. Uh, granted, the aluminum framing does, but of course, the screw is going to expand and contract and loosen over time. If it's in wood, of course, that is also going to expand and contract with humidity as it absorbs humidity or loses humidity with environmental conditions. And of course, if it gets any bit saturated with water, it will definitely lose its ability to hold strength. And also with heat, you know, plywood will also start to weaken with heat. So to kind of put it a little bit in perspective, what I'm going to do here is just show, demonstrating my weight, just my weight only, onto this aluminum framing here. And this aluminum framing realizes only glued at the floor here across the front and glued at the wall here across the back, and that is it. So it's essentially a frame like this, glued at the bottom, glued at the side, and then it abuts up. I don't have it glued anywhere else at the moment, right? And I will have it glued in some more places further up as I build up my benches here for the dinette. But, you know, I can fully hang from it, move on it, do all kinds of contraptions like this on it and you'll see there is no movement there is no creaking nothing that's coming from this it is solid As a matter of fact if i hang from here and i rock like this you're going to see the camera rocking i can see the extension cord i have that's hanging back here for my light is actually rocking as i do that the whole entire camper is rocking this frame is not moving one bit at all it is completely solid and granted, that's just my weight. I get that, right? But I can pull on it in all kinds of ways with lots of force. You see, I'm rocking the whole camper, and there is no movement. Now, if I had a few screws back in here into some wood, and I start yanking on it like that, I probably wouldn't feel so secure if those screws would continue to hold with a lot of continued force. And those screws, of course, are going to be far heavier than the glue will be. Granted, the glue does add weight, no doubt about it. And I've used a fair amount of tubes in this. I'll try to account for how many tubes I've used in this by the end of the project and add up that weight. Nonetheless, I do believe that's going to be far lighter right, than all the screws that I would have to put in here, along with plywood. If I were gluing plywood, so I have the glue for the plywood, then the plywood, and then the screws, and whatever fastener or whatever brackets to put in this 8020 to mount that to it. So there'd be a whole lot of different pieces of this that I have to go in there to add up in addition to the glue to glue the plywood and or the frame, so I might as well just glue the aluminum frame. This glue is designed to handle the expansion contraction of the aluminum, right? And so it can handle that. It's got a lot of elongation capability and it has a massive thermal range capability as well to handle very broad temperature conditions from cold to very hot. And of course, it's not going to be saturated by humidity. It can't absorb any at all or water that gets on it. So it will remain immensely strong, as strong as it will be from the beginning, even if water is splashed on it. So unlike a fastener, which could rust out or the wood, which of course could corrode or rot, you know, like we talked about. So there are definitely a lot of benefits to the glue, the adhesive and that's why I've used it and no doubt about it, it is immensely strong. And so I feel very, very confident in its strength. And particularly look over, you know, two four foot spans here, uh, 96 inches, you know, of this, 96 times over 500 pounds of force capability per inch. It's a massive, right, amount of force that can be applied to this framing. It's a lot. <laughs> and so, talking to the guys about 50,000 pounds, roughly, you know, force just for this one dinette bench. That's it. So, again, I say it would probably break the total composites wall before the actual glue would fail. And, of course, the aluminum is not going to fail before that. So, it would actually start weakening or putting stress on these fasteners and joints here. And that's why I make sure all those are strong, too and all level with each other. And so, because once this is glued in and tightened up, it will be one continuous piece. And especially when we look at this dinette piece, just the little piece in here, this whole piece that's glued in, it is an attached 
directly to this piece, this kitchen cabinet, which is also glued in, in multiple places, in the back, in the front, and also on the sidewall here. And it's gonna be glued in some portions up above here in the sidewall, and even into the ceiling. Same with this side as well. So both these dinette benches are not only glued into the bed wall, they're glued into the floor, they're glued into the sidewall, but then they're attached to things that are also continue to be glued in all the way up to the ceiling. And so it's all one continuous piece and they'll be continually connected all the way up to the front wall. So there's no way that these things can move fore or aft. They will be completely locked in. They're also going to be locked in, as I'm going to do here very momentarily, as I'm building my dinette floor over the batteries, support the batteries. That'll be a structural floor to support body weight over the batteries and also create a bridge between the two dinette sides. So it will bridge the two sides here. So there's no way that they can collapse in on each other or slide into each other. So no matter really how much force, they are going to be completely locked in place. And so that will really take away a lot of that potential force that could be applied onto that adhesive, right? It almost removes most of that. And so therefore it really continues to make it really strong. And even though I'm cantilevering some of this weight out from this platform, by the time you get these sidewalls glued and stuff and the real weight over the benches here, really over the middle of these benches, that weight is really going directly applied down. So the way I have designed and built the dinette benches really all the weight and forces on them for the most part are going to be pressing straight down and the tanks the water tanks are down in here they can't move in any direction they are completely locked in in all directions in two directions they are actually held in place by the walls of the total composite camper so they can't even move in those directions well really add it up count the floor as well and so they're only really being held down on the top and also held forward and held from moving inward. So in the other three positions, they can't you know, move and they're been completely locked in. And like I said, those pieces of framing can't move in any direction because they are completely locked in from side to side and front to back. So that's why I believe the adhesive is a way better way to go than trying to use screws into the walls or screws into a wood substrate that then is glued onto the wall. It's just, again, a point of failure. Take out your points of failure. Take out extra you know, things you don't need. Every extra thing in there that isn't necessary will just add a, a weakening point or a failure point. So there you go. That's why I think this is the way to go and super strong. And I'll keep demonstrating more over time. And I know you can't quite see me all the time here, but look at this right here. See that? I know it's not the most attractive view to look at the bottom of my shoes, but there is no movement. There is no creaking. And if I start rocking, you'll see the whole camper's rocking. You'll, you'll be rocking with it. So th this is strong. Finally building these overhead cabinets. These are the last cabinets other than the very front bathroom cabinet that I'm building out. There's still a lot of little details to do, finish up, obviously get plumbing and heating, air conditioning, and also electrical to be running these cabinets and get them covered. But right now I'm just finishing this up. I want to show you a little bit on just how strong these are. Let's get this last piece in here. A little bit of how I do this. Keep it really strong. using these end fasteners they are so strong and they're a hidden fastener which is awesome they're also cheap and light and being hidden I can now cover these up with my facing material for this cabinet and I think the fasteners won't be in the way and all I gotta do is come down here to the end get this end lined up and assuming all my dimensions are correct and my holes, my access holes here, are in the right place. What I found is a little tough sometimes when two of these are right next to each other, butting up against each other. So I come back in, just do a double check, check the end here, make sure this is all lined up. That it is. So those are all lined up. This thing's in place. And you can tell there's not a lot of material here, right? I would bet there's very little glue up here, very little. I basically just have this piece glued in and these two end pieces, but I bet this is so strong that I can do pull-ups from this. And I can't quite get over this because I've got my over lower bench here, but I am lifting myself off the ground all but just kind of my balance against this bench here. It is not budging in any way. And so somebody asked is how strong is this glue? Again, there's about one foot 
two foot, three feet. That's it. This top piece is not glued in. So there's three feet here of this glue and at over 500 pounds of tension strength per square inch, structural strength per square inch, it is a lot of strength, a lot. And so, yeah, it's plenty strong. It probably would, it, it's not going to fail. And so, look at that, I am completely hanging. I know you can't really see it. I can't quite get my feet up to show you. Here, let me show you. Okay, ready? I don't know if you can see my feet. Lifting up, that's me off the ground holding off this cabinet. Yeah, it's strong. This glue is strong. Because this is a little tiny over cabinet. It's going to be some pillows or blankets, a little bit of clothing. It's not going to be much up here, right? I'm going to have my air conditioning duct. That's going to have a vent here, come out here, a couple of switches here, same on the other side. So this is in, obviously it'll be a, a bottom, a solid plate here for the switches and, the, and that. And then of course these other cabinets will all be covered and face up as well. And uh, obviously get the blinds in and some other stuff. But that's it, it is so strong. And I don't even have this piece and this piece attached. Because why? Because they're gonna get attached to the side here, the side paneling here. There's really not a need to attach those two. So that's done, it's strong, it is bomber. Love it, and it's simple. There's not a lot of fasteners up there. So, pretty cool, huh? Hope you enjoyed this video, and I certainly hope you consider using adhesive sealants for many different applications, and certainly in these composite campers, they are fantastic and great, as I've learned. So hopefully this shows a little bit of that strength to you. I will demonstrate more of the strength as this gets built out and do more pull-ups or other things to really demonstrate the strength of it and just how strong it is. And that's more than adequate and strong enough. And it's probably the better way to go. Thank you for watching and subscribing. There's still a lot to come on my whole DIY exhibition camper build video series here. Thanks for watching. Certainly give me any questions you have. Write them down in the comments. And I'll be glad to respond and help you out in any way you can. And certainly happy trails to you.